Hey guys, it's Stacy here. Welcome to my channel, Life's a Project, where I like to share my everyday life projects with you. And today's project is putting together this Spectricide Bagabug Japanese Beetle Trap. So I thought I'd give this a try. I purchased it from Lowe's for $5.98. And if you have been following my channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I battle Japanese beetles every year. And this past year, really bad in the garden on the plant leaves. You can see uh, the plant leaves are skeletonized and really just remind me of your grandma's doilies, um, just kind of lacy looking. So thank goodness the plants are still doing okay, but it really just makes them look so, you know, nasty. So eventually, of course, they would destroy the garden and destroy all the plants if I was to just leave them alone. Before now, I've been handpicking them, knocking them into a bucket filled with water, and that has been doing okay, but every day there's just tons more on there. So for $5.98, you get one set of interlocking veins, one dual lure system, two bags, and one hang tie. So just like in my garden, you can see in the picture, has the skeletonized leaf. So if you see that, you have a Japanese beetle problem. Now on the back here, it's just directions for use and also storage and disposal. So just a lot of information and step-by-step -step how to put it together. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it together, but I wanted to show you this just in case you wanted to pause this video and read more about it. So in the front here, it also says it does last the entire beetle season. It traps over 5,000 square foot area. So if you want to trap a larger area, you'll need more traps. So now I'm just backing up a little bit, showing you I'm standing under the deck. And you can see here how close I am to the garden. It says to place it about 30 foot downwind of foliage to intercept beetles heading toward it. So you don't want to place it right inside the garden. You want to give it some space so you're not drawing them to your other plants. You want to draw them away from it. So I'm using a five gallon bucket as well as a shepherd's hook. Now this shepherd's hook is about four foot tall and I'll be hanging the trap from that. So inside the package, it does come packaged really nicely, I think. Everything is kind of um, all together here. You can see inside the box, nothing left in here. So that's nice. So you can see it comes with a bag and there's two there with the tie, the lure, and these yellow things are the interlocking veins and they just kind of slide together. And then it has holes where you can take the hang tie and tie it to whatever you want to tie it to, in this case, the shepherd's hook. So I'm gonna start by putting together the interlocking veins. One just flips over and then it just slides and connects to the other one. So really simple. So now it's time for the next step. So next I'm going to attach the bag and you can see here on the interlocking veins it has this little kind of a hook that the little hole from the bag goes in. So all you have to do is just slip that hole over top of the little plastic hook there and that's pretty easy. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do all the other ones. So it's all done, all sides are attached. You can see the shape of the bag here. It's supposed to prevent the beetles from coming out the top once they go in. You can see there's holes in the bottom because this is outside and when it rains, your bag will be able to drain. Now you can see it down inside here. So really a simple setup, easy to put together. So now I can add the tie by kind of running it through this hole and that way I'll be able to attach it to the shepherd's hook. So it really just looks like a long kind of bread tie. That's what it reminds me of. So I'm just going to feed it through the hole, kind of make both ends the same length. You can attach this however you want to, but this is just how I'm doing it. And so I'm just going to kind of wrap it around here a few times, making sure it's secure and not gonna just fall off or if the wind blows, it's not going to blow away. And that's all there is to that. 
So next I have here a marble rock that came from my front landscaping and I'm going to use this to kind of weigh down the bag. Now in the instructions it does say to use some type of stones, rocks, pebbles, whatever you have to weigh down the bag just in case you have strong winds or wind gusts. The bag is not blowing everywhere. So that is what I did. So next is adding the lure and attaching that to the interlocking vein. So you can see back here the active ingredients. So pretty much this is called a dual lure, which I guess is twofold. It has the natural sex attractant for the Japanese beetles and also they've added a proven floral lure so that they will be drawn to that. So on the interlocking vein, you can see that it has these two kind of slits on here and that is where the lure will kind of pop into place. So all I need to do is kind of remove the kind of film, top film here from the packaging. And when you remove this top portion, you want to leave the lure inside. So keep it attached. You don't want to remove the contents of the package. Now I'll just kind of pop it in here and it's not going to fit that way. So it pops in like that and I don't think that thing is going anywhere. So guys, this bag of bug is all put together. I think it was really simple to do. Now uh, down here you can see that I have this five gallon bucket. Now I got this idea from another YouTube channel um, where he had the bucket underneath the bag filled halfway with just plain water and he said the beetles were bad flyers so they would actually bounce off the bag and fall into the bucket and so he caught more that way. There was just as many in the bucket as in the bag so I thought it would be smart to give that a try. The only problem that I may face is having the trap too far away um, over to the side kind of um, too close to the house you know not getting a lot of wind action to kind of spread that scent around but it is a little bit of an eyesore and I really didn't want to have it out in the yard but you got to do what you got to do so if I have to move it after a day or so if it's not working properly then I will I'll keep you updated I hope you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out on any future projects or updates to this project and if you have any questions or comments place those down in the comment section below I thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.